Finding your creative identity or your voice is at the heart of standing out as someone who's great. It's something with your fingerprint, you know, so when people look at your work, they know right away who created that piece. John Paul Douglas, an LA-based commercial photographer and director, has a strong voice in his work. And at the most recent Connecting Things gathering in Costa Mesa, he talks on this topic and his work. And this is John Paul Douglas. Um, I kind of want to start, I don't want to assume that you guys like know anything about me. I'm sure some of you do, especially the pizza stuff and all that. So I kind of just, uh, just wanted to like peruse through my website, kind of like it wasn't my website. I was just looking at some dude's website. Um, so you guys can get an idea and then I can kind of go on and talk about like my story and stuff like that. So this is a website. Hmm. So I'm just going to click through here. Okay. Does anyone recognize this guy? No? Okay. <laughs> Okay, looks like portraits and stuff. <laughs> okay, so now it's like you've all spent like a minute or two on my website. So um, let's present. Um, does this work? <laughs> I made this yesterday, and uh, like all of you, I like procrastinate on, especially stuff like this, where it's like, it's not really work. You're kind of doing it for fun, and you know, it's a pleasurable thing. So, yeah, I spent like probably three or four hours like late last night, like putting this together. So, thank you for the coffee. Okay. So, uh, I kind of want to start uh, talking about a little bit about myself because I think if you guys know more about me and where I come from, that'll make it more interesting for you. And then you maybe can relate to it too. Um, I assume you're all kind of like creative people. You all look like you're creative people because we're, you know, you look very stylish and what have you. Um, so and two, I think, I think where we come from is also like very important as far as like forming our tastes, you know, and then it's also kind of a way to be inspired, you know. Sometimes if I feel confused about something and ideas or um, if I'm trying to think of something in innovative, sometimes I'll just be like, well, what did I like when I was like seven years old? Like what was I stoked on? So you'll look back and then you'll be inspired and I know Josh does that sometimes and a lot of designers will you know, do things from the 80s or 90s or from their childhood where you used to be stoked and then you see it again later and there's that like nostalgia attached to it. Um, I put this picture of Muppet Babies up there because uh, I, did a, I did a, not so much a talk previously, but it was, it was about like being childlike and being creative. And uh, the thing with Muppet Babies, I don't know if you guys remember, I didn't really watch it, watch it, but this is funny, I'm talking about Muppet Babies every day. <laughs> Everybody's like, what? But the Muppet Babies, they like, every episode started and it was like, Muppet Babies, they did the song, and then, and then they would go into this like imaginary world and it was always like crazy, but really they were just in their little like crib room, and then like every now and then there would be like the mom would come by and you would just see this part of her, but the mom like wasn't involved in this cool creative like imaginary world that they were in at all, you know, because they like because the mom like couldn't do it because she was an adult and she had responsibilities and all those things. And it's like, I don't know, I feel like sometimes like life gets in the way of your creativity and uh, you know, trying to be more childlike, I think, is a good way to and play and discover, you know, we're asked to to make stuff from nothing sometimes, like the Muppet Babies would. So uh, I don't know, it's just, it's something to think about. I don't have much of a point there. So, <laughs> so I want to start like with where I came from because I think it's kind of funny and interesting. And then, you know, we all have this like creative journey and you're all figuring things out. I'm 32 and uh, I always knew like I kind of wanted to do something in the creative world, but I was never sure what it was. So I have all these like sort of blips on the radar of okay, I was kind of figuring it out, kind of figuring it out, kind of, and then I got to cameras, and I was like, okay, cameras seems to be the way to go for me to kind of like express myself. 
1982, uh, I was born in this little town called Plant City, Florida, and it's the winter strawberry capital of the world, <laughs> which is funny. Um, it's right by Lakeland and Tampa. Lakeland was where Edward Scissorhands was filmed, which is very cool. Um, so this is my first memory. It was in kindergarten. I remember I walked outside, and I like to like play with bugs and stuff. People are giving me the weirdest looks. I like to play with bugs and stuff. And there was like a dead bee on the ground, and I walked over to it, and I went to like pick it up because he was dead, harmless bee. But a dead bee can still sting you, and then it stung me. And I just remember like, I don't know, something changed, something clicked when that dead bee stung me, and I thought, wow. And I don't know if it's like a, you can make a big impact after you're dead thing or what, but. Uh, <laughs> um, and there's not, not much of a point of that exercise, it's just like a memory I have. And I don't think it has to have a point, you know? It's just an interesting story. And I think that that's cool to, to just tell. So we grew up kind of on this sort of goat farm. Um, but they were pygmy goats, so they were the little goats. And uh, still to this day, I'm like obsessed with goats. Um, and if you guys, I mean, I'm sure some of you are. But I would go out, I would go out, I'd be barefoot, and I would just sit I would sit on these little logs and I would just sit amongst the goats. And they would come and I would just let them like chew on my clothes and like, I would just like watch them for hours, just like sort of introspectively just watching the goats like play and you know, they're fun to watch, but like, I don't know, maybe it's a kid thing, but I still could do it now. So these are other things I was obsessed with, dinosaurs, putting grasshoppers in jars, Nestle Quick, which is Nest Quick now. Um, this was huge for me. Mario Paint, I think, was the very first time I was like, I don't know. It just really had my attention. You know, it was the first time we were, is anybody Mario Paint anything? anything? Few? Okay. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, it was like a big, it was a big thing for me. Um, so I always, I just hours and hours of just drawing with the mouse, you know? And that was your first, that was my first mouse. Is it your first mouse? Um, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think it must have been actually. Yeah, it but I like, that was like graphically pleasing digitally. Right, right. And there was a lot of like semi-sophisticated doodads in there that you could like mess with. <laughs> anyway, I put the power glove there just because it's cool. I didn't actually have one. <laughs> um, so next was like like skateboarder guy. That's that's what I was. But that's when I first got this little like whatever Sony camera. Um, and this is actually when you live in the country, there's nowhere to skate. So my dad actually had this built, um, which makes it seem like I was super spoiled, but I don't think I was, but it was a crazy ramp. Um, so this is when I started skateboarding a lot, and I was just like obsessed with it. It's like all, all I was doing. And uh, now I meet people, and I realize that a lot of us share that, kind of. And I guess it's because it's this weird countercultural thing where you're like expressing yourself in, in some kind of way that's like not the same way everybody else is or something. I don't know, whether it's BMX or, I don't know what to call rollerblading. Um, <laughs> inlining, I think they just call it skating. Fruit booting, yeah. <laughs> um, so anyways, I tore my ACL a couple times and then uh, skateboarding got hard, really hard after that. So I was like, oh well, I, I like wearing all these like, this is early 2000s, I was like, I like wearing all these vintage t-shirts that I'm going to the thrift store, I was like, I should sell these on eBay, you know, because it seemed like a good way to make money and I had a lot of time, I was just in college. So I started this company, and, but I, I wrongfully named it Totally Tight Fit. Um, and this was like my logo. And, uh, and the, the dot com was clear, I like had the, the, that and everything. You would think it would be something really raunchy, but I had it. But then I... I uh, and that was just me selling like clothes on eBay. I would like, I had like a little model. Well, yeah, I had like a, well I changed it to Chuckware. Um, which Chuck is this person here, this guy, who is my dad. And I found this old photo from the 70s of him. And then um, that became like my logo. I was just like, I would put it all over. Kind of like the Shepherd Fairy back then where he's just slapping the Obey guy everywhere or Andre the Giant everywhere. I was like putting that places and that was like my thing. And this was the time when these little cheeky, like, kind of shirts was, were funny. So, 
here I am wearing a funny hat, like putting a shirt on. I'm like photographing this and put, I would put the vintage stuff up on eBay and then I had like all of this just like stock of shirts that eventually I got rid of. Um, but it was fun and, and, I, and I feel like I learned a lot because I was like designing these silly little things. And I know a lot of you are probably really talented designers and you're scoffing at all this stuff, which is totally fine. Um, this, is how, this is how confident I was that it would work. Um, <laughs> <laughs> luckily, luckily it is my dad, so it's like, oh, it's my dad. Like, it's okay. We're cool. Um, so after that, I was like, you know what? Like, I don't want to be the t-shirt guy anymore, or the like, vintage t-shirt funny guy anymore. I was like, I just liked making the website and making all the graphics. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be just like a painter, designer kind of guy. So I would like make this stuff, but then I realized I had very I never like had like a refined um, technical skill, so I could like do doodle like this and have these like weird little ideas and stuff, and and it was fine. Which this kind of stuff's kind of popular now, but like actually I don't even know what this is. Um, and I would do like little things like this was emo y kind of period. <laughs> um, but I would do this stuff and then like some mixed media stuff, and I was just like doing whatever I could, and it made no sense. It was just all over the place creatively. Like it was just like what is I. And you can kind of be like, well, okay, maybe I, I understand this guy. I didn't understand myself, though. You know, you're just searching at that point. So um, this whole time I'm in school, by the way. I, did, I like, was in college for psychology, and then I was in a design program. And eventually I went to a film program in UCF, and um, that's where I met the connection here today, Josh. Um, but then I got my first SLR camera. Not a cool one or anything, just this, like, it was on sale at Circuit City, if that tells you like how long ago it was. Um, and I just got like really obsessed with just taking photos of anything, like like people get sometimes, like like a hobby photographer. I was taking photos of sunsets, close-up macro shots of things, like you name it. Nothing that I'm into now, like whatsoever. But I was like super into it then, and I was just like very interested in all of the technical aspects of it. Um, which now I don't care at all about anything technical. But there's this website called, that's actually a My, My Four Thirds, which this camera uses like a four thirds sensor. There's a lot of photographers here, I'm sure you know what that is. It's just the size of the sensor. Um, but I went on this site, I was working at Progressive Insurance Call Center where people would get in accidents and they would call and I would answer, which was like a train wreck. Um, so you had to like be empathetic and all this stuff and I'm just like, looking at this photography website why people are like having a traumatic experience. <laughs> and I'm just like looking at this and I worked there for four years and I like looked at this site so much and there's not, the thing is there's nothing like this now and it's unfortunate, you know, because now we just look at Instagram. Um, it's unfortunate because you can't get any like real feedback. There's not really a good, I mean maybe you guys know, but I don't know of a spot where you can go post your work and get like serious feedback. And this was like huge for me because I was posting this stuff that like I thought was good. I was like, this is a great photo. Like, and then I would post it there and I would get torn apart in like the nicest way though. But, the, but they would tear me apart and it was like important. Like they would even say things like, why did you take this? You know? <laughs> and which it's, that's a great question a lot of times, you know? And then a lot of people have a, have a tough time answering that. Like, why did you take it? Oh, it just, it looks cool, you know? Like, Okay, but like, yeah, that's it? Like, you just think it looks cool? So I kind of figured a lot of that stuff out here, and it was like further refining, I don't want to say my style, but even like what it was that I wanted to photograph, or how I wanted to, how I wanted my work to represent me. So I was, here, I, I was on this site for probably like, it feels like forever, but it was probably like a year and a half I was like on this site, like refreshing every day. It was a very small community of like, very old people actually, like old hobby photographers. But um, once I started getting into off-camera flash and stuff, uh, basically this, I, I couldn't post here anymore because it was just too far advanced, I guess you could say. So this, uh, this is where I went next. And man, that place, DeviantArt is a shit show. It's like... <laughs> And I'm, one of my friends was on there and he's like, yeah, it's cool, man, I like it, like, you should go. And like, nothing, like, the site before, like, they don't even compare. 
this, I mean, and this is another one of the sites too where you get like nothing but praise. Nobody's like, you know, everybody's like, oh, wow, awesome, you're the best. And it's like, okay, I'm the best, whatever. <laughs> um, and then back then, like, kind of like now you were like, you hope to be featured. You post your work on there, work on there, and there was a thing called a daily deviation, which if you posted there, like all the weird anime do people, whatever, would like see your, see your work because it would be on the front page. So it would get like thousands and thousands of views. So this was the first photo that that happened to, which this, I don't think I have this up anywhere now, but um, it was, I had all these like, this again was like kind of emo-y time, but I had all these like dudes in this warehouse where, this is the story of this warehouse. I would go there at night, like three in the morning, and just practice doing tripod. I would set it up, and then I'd run out in front of it, and, or whatever, and like take photos of myself. And I was like, man, it's green in here. That's crazy. It kind of looks like Fight Club. But really, I just had my white balance off, and I didn't know any better. Like, <laughs> um, so I was like, whoa, this magic warehouse like, has this weird green vibe, and it looks like, it looks like David Fincher's Fight Club. I'm going to like get all these dudes to like, take their shirts off, and we're going to oil them up, and then I'm going to do this like, <laughs> Fight Club reenactment photo shoot. So that's what I did, and uh, it was kind of a success. Like, the problem is I decided to up the ante and I was using flash mixed with the weird green like fluorescent light and I was like, why isn't it green anymore? And then, anyways, I ended up like turning it green and a lot of them green in post, but I, like, I didn't know what I was doing at that time. But even still, like, you know, I made this series of photos and like, I mean, now I look at it and I think it's just odd, but, um, you know, it was really popular at the time in my little photography world. So I was, that's when I first got any kind of like recognition at all. And that's not why I quit my job and dropped out of college. Um, it's that I started, after that I actually started getting hired to do like band photos and stuff, which you don't make a lot of money doing, but like I did the math comparatively and if I can get $500 to do band photos compared to like $500 a week I was making at my job, I was like, oh, I'm gonna do this. Like, much, yeah, this, this is what I wanna do. Um, so yeah, I quit my job, dropped out of college. What happened is I like, by the time I got accepted to this film program, I had already been to going to school for like six years, and then they said it was going to be like three more years. And I was just like, I just can't do this anymore. I'm sorry. I liked film school, though, because all you do is like sit and you just watch films, which is awesome, because it forces you to watch films you wouldn't normally watch, which sometimes like if you really make yourself sit through that stuff, like it's a really, it's a really good thing. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about collaboration now. This is a designer friend of mine, um, Danny Jones, who's like super talented, um, and I'm very fortunate to have run in with him. And he's the guy that was first hiring me to do band photo shoots because he was doing the album art, and then he wanted cool photos, or at least what I thought was cool. Um, so this was the very first thing we worked on together, and there was no money for like talent or anything, so that's me, um, and it was for this like band, and terrible. The water's like crazy blown. Anyways, he photoshopped it to hell and back. Um, that was the first thing we worked on, which, uh, and later on we worked on this together. This is, this is like years later though, um, which was cool. We got to create this whole world for this metal band. So I'm actually good friends with the metal guy now, Trivium. So this is another thing we worked on. Uh, it's like an art project called Dawn of Man that, uh, and there's a lot of Photoshop happening here that he's doing, not me. Not too much happening there, actually. Well, yeah. Here's, here's something I worked on with Josh, Ariza, this guy here. This was their engagement photos, which is so funny because it doesn't look like an engagement photo to me. <laughs> it looks way cooler. Um, I shouldn't have put these together because this one, it looks like he's a psycho killer. <laughs> <laughs> And this one, it looks like they're just in Palm Springs, like <laughs> la di da. Um, so here's the here's the a thing I worked on with with Danny that that got a good amount of recognition, especially in design world online. The thing is, is it was it was kind of a departure from what I was doing at the time, kind of like the style and stuff. But I mean, essentially, I was just we would find these these worker guys, leather worker, woodworker, or in this case, like letterpress worker guy. Um, and I would just go shoot them. And I was actually 
just didn't have a lot of work at the time. So I was like, man, I, I want to shoot. I want to shoot people. Let me like think up of a reason here. And then I talked to Danny about doing this like mag online journal kind of thing of like just like dudes because in all honesty, I've always liked to shoot men more than women. And uh, I think it has to do with the fact that men just don't care. You can just do whatever. You can light them however, any way you want. And they're like, cool, you know? Whereas like a girl, it's kind of like you want to you want to make sure that they look their prettiest. And I don't always want to do that. Um, it's just, I don't know, it's just, you know, sometimes that's a lot of work and it's a lot of pressure, but like guys, you can just be like, yeah, do this and then shoot them and then it's just, it's easy. Um, so here's another little vignette from that. And we did some videos with this too. And uh, I actually got a good amount of work from it, which was cool. But it wasn't, I never really felt like it was like my style. I felt like it was more like the designer because I would just shoot a ton of photos, video, edit the video, but then I would just give him the photos and then he would put them in this beautiful kind of format. So I always felt like it was really more, more of his thing than my thing. Like anybody could be shooting these photos and then you're just doing a lot of the work. <laughs> Here's the guy I'm collaborating with uh, lately out here. And he's insane. And uh, he does like these 15 second dance videos on Instagram and they're, they're, they're just crazy, but he messaged me one day at like this weird cryptic message about pizza and collaboration. And the next thing you know, I'm like photographing him and videoing him doing all sorts of stuff. So um, this whole thing that I'm talking about, it's kind of like on creative identity, which I just thought when I was driving the other day. Um, so I'm kind of like working towards that, showing you guys what I've been through so you could see where my cre creative identity comes from. In this part, I'm going to talk about inspirations a bit. Um, and this is, when I, what I mean by these kind of inspirations here is like the first time where you're like, almost just like stopped in your tracks by something like, whoa, like, I understand this. This, yeah, I get what this guy's doing, you know? I, I get what this girl's doing, what, whatever. Like, like this, is, this is very special. Um, which when I was on Deviant Art, some people were like, oh, your work reminds me of like a David Lynch film. And I was like, who's David Lynch? And then um, I think I had seen like Twin Peaks or something before that, but I didn't, I didn't really grasp it. I didn't understand. So I went and I watched uh, Blue Velvet. And uh, I remember whoever I was dating at the time, they fell right asleep. They were just <laughs> like, OK, uh, this is weird. And I don't know, whatever. And they fell asleep. And then I just stayed up watching it, just like wide-eyed, just like, like I had discovered something and like I'm not alone, you know, in a way. So I started just obsessing over Lynch and then I discovered some other stuff. Cronenberg was also big for me. And then P.T. Anderson, especially Magnolia, especially this frog scene. Do you guys know about the frog scene? So I'm like identifying with all these things and I'm like, okay, I seem to just like this absurd shit. This stuff where it's just like, what? Like, or huh? You know, like that's the thing where I'm like, wow, like that's, that's what I really, that's what I really enjoy. That's what I really like to consume is this stuff where you watch it, um, especially film, where you watch it and you just like feel like, ooh, or uneasy or crazy or something. Um, but I do want to talk about some photographers. Do you guys, do you guys know who that is, right? That's Kip from Napoleon Dynamite, but his actual name is Aaron Rule, and he's like super talented. Um, I've always followed his work, and he has such cool style. I should have used a real photo of him <laughs> now that I think about it, because he's actually like looks really cool. And like, anyways, he's a commercial director and a photographer. And here's some of some of like his work, which this is like very old, but um, this is stuff that like if I saw this now, I'd be like, ah, um, this is ducks. Uh, Gregory Crutzen, I actually didn't know of right off the bat, but same thing on the deviant art site. People were like, oh, this reminds me of that. So I went and I look, and it's like one of those things where you find somebody else, and, and he's like completely next level. Like he is a thing of his own. Like what he's done and what he's created, um, it's, it's crazy, and I'll explain it a little bit. But um, it's cool to find these other sort of artists out there, then you identify with them, and then you look at their work, and you're just like blown away by it. And, um, he does stuff like this, where it's these crazy sets, uh, crazy stuff happening, uh, large format camera film. I think that's actually William H. Macy. Um, 
but stuff like this where you're just like the same thing it's like this absurd sort of scene and you know it's like a film still in a way so I was in film school and I was interested in making films but the task of getting a bunch of people together to make a film is a it's like a serious task like you can't just go make a film it takes so much work and I'm really lazy like super lazy <laughs> I mean I didn't make this until yeah anyways but I started getting into this off-camera flash stuff, and I was like, whoa, I can make these like cinema I want to make in film. That's another reason why I kind of dropped the school. I was like, oh, I could just make stills of this stuff. Um, another photographer, Reed Young. Similar kind of vibe. I love this like uh, sunburn photo. Um, but yeah, similar, similar kind of thing. This guy's insane. He's older. Just a random fact. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll talk about the pizza stuff now. Um, so I did this when I was when I moved out here. Um, same thing with like the grain and gram thing. It's like I had a couple months where it was a little bit dry, and I was like, you know what? I should just like. I should do this pizza thing I'd been thinking about. I had passed a, uh, we lived in the arts district in LA at the time, lots of graffiti everywhere, and it was always changing. And there was like a skate park, Hollenbeck Plaza, like not too far from where I would live. So I would walk there, skate there, and then this wall would always have different graffiti on it. And one day it was like a fresh wall, like they had just stripped off everything off just to be painted again soon. But then someone just tagged like a pizza, like right in the middle. And I just like stopped and I just thought, that's so funny to me. This just huge wall and this little pizza, and it was like purposefully like put up high right in the middle. And I was just laughing. I was like, man, I should put pizza on stuff. Um, <laughs> so I, I had a I had a few experiments. First, I picked up like a Domino's pizza. It was cut, um, which I found out really quickly that was the wrong thing to do. And I just like skated around with it with my friend and like was just like my friends like what are you doing like I, what are you doing and I'm like no I think I think there's something here so I eventually landed on Little Caesars uncut not too cooked pizza because it was like this floppy kind of Ninja Turtle look to it <laughs> so this is my dad's miniature horse <laughs> he uh, he upgraded from the pygmy goats to miniature horses now to my advantage, so I was able to put that on there like it's a saddle. Uh, right, I live right next to the Dodger Stadium and the streets kind of lined with this LA, so that was kind of a no-brainer. This is in San Francisco. I think that's in Palm Springs. I mean, you guys get the idea. These don't really take a lot of explaining. It's like clean, simple compositions with pizzas flopped in them somewhere. Um, there's one at a skate park, like about to drop in. <laughs> Here's the only pizza photo that has flash, so that's special. <laughs> Shopping cart. A lot of people think this is a miniature, but it's not. I was actually had like 10 pizzas on me. <laughs> this is a famous pug. Uh, this is a famous Instagram pug that we were in Seattle. Actually, you were there. Yeah, Josh was with me for this one. This is the one that... I don't really care for this one too much, but this is the one that Instagram uh, featured, so it's like people recognize it. Oh, at my house there's peacocks like all over the place, which is crazy and awesome. Whoa. Um, so I was able to get this eventually. <coughs> Took a while though. That pizza, as you can see, is like very old. <laughs> it like sat out there for a while. Um, so yeah, and as the, this is funny, I don't, I don't know if this is a known thing, but at the time I was working on a video for Instagram, and I was doing this pizza stuff on the side and like the guy that was editing it and also art directing kind of was like snuck in a few little pizza nuggets in there. So, um, and these are actually some of my friends down here in the, in the chat. So that was just like a, a fun thing. And this is before like anybody knew about it or anything. We were just doing this for fun. And here's a really, here's a really early photo I found, like probably from 2005 or six, where I would go around and I would put the little, I call it the chuck head. <laughs> I would put it in places and take a photo of it and this was just like in my apartment and this is, I wouldn't call this like a good photo but I just thought it was interesting that, you know, nine years ago I was sticking something in a bush and photographing it. 
Okay. So what's my crea creative identity? What is yours? What? Um, what? So I think I think creative identity, and this is something that like forms over time. And I've been I've been at it at least at it with cameras for like nine years now. So you know every couple of years I feel like my whole my whole view on everything kind of changes. You know, especially now with like as fast as things are moving with Instagram, with as much stuff as, you're, as I'm like trying to make and put out there, like it's like in all these jobs and like it's just things keep changing and changing and then I look back and I think it was two years ago I did like a Creative Mornings talk and like I feel like completely different now than I did then, if that makes sense. So things are constantly changing but I think um, especially with Instagram and the fact that people don't look at websites anymore, like, and I, you know, I say this because I don't, I used to look at photographers' websites like all the time. I would have like my little favorites. And the favorites are still there, but it's like I just don't, I don't go to them. I feel like I just like, at night I'll just refresh Instagram and kind of look at it and see what everybody's doing. It's like everything's been unified into this one place. And the problem with that is like not everybody uses Instagram as like a portfolio. Like a lot of people are like, oh, here's my life snaps or whatever, but here's my real work there. But it's like, we're all so lazy now and our attention is so like, you know, poor. So it's like, you know, I don't go to that person's website or whatever. Photographers I used to follow, it's like I don't, I don't look at their, their website as often or their blog or their updates. So if they're not posting cool work to Instagram, I feel like I'm not seeing it. So now I feel like more important, well, more important than ever, um, I feel like, at least for me, like I want when you go to my Instagram page, which is where that's where people see anything that I do. It needs to like have this strong voice. It needs to have this strong like, you know, with a few flicks, just be like, okay, he's the pizza guy, and this is kind of his thing. Like, really, you can remove the pizza and put another thing there, and it's kind of like still works. You know, it's not as funny. People don't like it as much, but like, if I shot a portrait the same style I shot the pizza, it would still be like my style of work. I feel like, so it's like. I don't mind being called the pizza guy because to me it's like, okay, well, the pizza is this, and that's me, so that's my identity as a creative. And if you hire me, you kind of know what you're going to get. It's kind of obvious, you know. And I, um, that said, I still have like a lifestyle section on my website, which I kind of hate. I hate that it's up there because all it is is just happy people smiling with iPhones and tablets and stuff. And but you have to have that because like. If you want to get hired, you have to at least be like, okay, yeah, I know you like all this, which I never get hired to do all that. I always get hired to do this happy people smiling with an iPhone, um, which a lot of us are doing now, I feel like, or laptops, technology. But I still want my like, creative voice to shine through, and I want them to remember me for that. And then eventually, which it's, it's just starting now, like within the past year and a half, eventually I want to get hired like, for this reason, you know? Because this, this was the original goal. And there was a lot of times I strayed from it and I was like, oh, well, yeah, I could shoot like this guy and just shoot wide open and uh, wide open and overexposed and it has this look. It's like, yeah, but everybody's stuff looks like that, you know? Like, you don't want to get lost in the mix of like lifestyle photographers or like, you know, where everything looks the same. Like, I'm not going to remember that person. I'm like, oh, yeah, you take great photos, but like, I don't see your voice there, you know? So it's like, I want to have this like, okay, he likes dinosaurs or parrots or lots of watches, there's a story behind that, um, or whatever. It just always has this like a little bit of like a quirk to it and then like a, a, a composition that's very obvious, very, very simple. So, and sometimes there's a joke or two or a magical peacock. Um, See, so yeah, after I made the pizza thing, things got really weird and people were just like, oh, we just want pizza, we just want pizza nonstop, nonstop, and it was kind of like, because uh, by the time I got popular, I was like over it. I was like done. By that point, I had already done 50 pizzas. So now I think I've done like 75 pizzas maybe, which like after a while, you're kind of just like, okay, I can't put, there's nothing else I could put a pizza on. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to like wean them off and like start these other series that are like in the same vibe really, but they're just not pizzas. So I did one with like a bad, hap I call it a bad happy meal where it was insane to me that McDonald's released this Happy Meal with this crazy, scary face. <laughs> and people didn't believe. They were like, did you make that box? And I'm like, no, that's like what they're selling. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yes, that's the whole joke. And they're like, oh. 
but I was like making it seem like even scarier, putting it in like weird environments and like making it seem like it was just a bad guy, even though he's a happy meal. So, <laughs> and then one day I just spray painted a hot dog gold and I thought it looked so cool that I was like, oh, this should be a series. So I just started spray painting food gold and in a way I was like, I don't know, I was kind of making fun of like the trend of the like fruit on a table, seamless background, weird shape, like, you know, it was kind of like me, like, I enjoy that stuff, but I don't feel like I could just do it and get away with it because like, I don't know, it's just such the trend. But so I was like, oh, well, I'm going to put my own spin on it and use these like pastel-y colors with like some weird, weird piece of food that's like funny, like a hot dog is funny to me, you know? <laughs> and the fact that it's gold is ridiculous. Like it's just so. And then I take these pictures around my house of the peacocks just because like I constantly see these like surreal scenes and then there's like these peacocks and we live like on this like sort of tall hill and you anyways so those are those are the some of the other series i have on instagram um so yeah you guys get what i mean by creative identity i think when i say that it's kind of weird to ask a giant crowd of people something um but i want to i do want to talk about like work a little bit uh work stuff I had a, a photo, this is for like more photographer specific. Oh, I'm mean, not really. But I had a rep for probably like four years. And in all honesty, she, she was great. I loved her. She didn't really do anything for me. I, uh, I never got a job with her. I never got a job with my, my photo rep. And maybe she was a bad one. I don't know. She was the first one and last one I ever had. She actually just quit the business. Um, we would bid on stuff, but I feel like I was always like the third bid guy or something. And, she was in Dallas and I was in Florida, so I felt like there was like a disconnect with that there. They're like, people like to work with someone who's local, unless it's like they're New York or LA and then they're flying, you know, there's that whole thing where, oh, we're flying in a guy from LA or we're flying in a guy from New York. Um, but you know, a market like Dallas, it's like you want to hire whoever the local guy is there. You want to support those people. Um, and it's really those relationships. I lived in Orlando at the time and that's where I was making all my relationships and that's where I was getting all my work. It was in Orlando and then kind of like the Florida area. So from my experience, the relationships are really, are, are what gets you the work. You know, if your work's good, great. That's a definite plus. But um, it's really those relationships that, that come through in the end for like my bigger projects. And I also, I've showed you guys just all this video or all this photo stuff, but I think I do like 50%, maybe 60% video now. Um, but I haven't, the, the projects have been so kind of like random. There's, there's not like a clear voice in there yet. And it's kind of like still a hodgepodge. So I don't, you know, I don't show it or push it in anyone's face too often. There's definitely some projects I'm like really proud of, but there's not like a through line yet to them. So my crea creative identity and my video portfolio is not very strong yet in my opinion. I can't be like, here it is, here's my voice. It's kind of all over the place. I still have it up on my website so people can see. So if those jobs come through, they're like, oh, this guy could shoot video, of course. But it's like, it's just not there yet. And I think it's gonna take a few more years because I didn't start doing video until like 2009 or 10. So we'll get there with that. And then in the future, um, the future for me, I think, I'm realizing I started out as like a photographer, loving the technical parts, loving just taking photos of anybody, making stuff, what, what have you. I'm kind of less interested in the photography part now, and I'm more interested in the idea behind it. And I'm more interested in the, you know, something somebody saw that was like, wow, they saw that. Like on Instagram, for example, I follow a lot of these people that are like, it's like this, uh, they're like street photographers, but it's not like you see like, an emotional scene or anything. It's like something they just saw where it could be just like a paper flipped over and there's like a cup or something and it's like, whoa, look at that art, you know? That is so cool. Or, you know, how they saw something while they're just walking through the street and I'm like constantly amazed by that stuff. Um, it's actually this guy named Gang Culture. Does, does anybody know Gang Culture? Any Gang Cultures? Wow, thank you. Uh, there's this like this guy, uh, let me go and explain. There's this guy that just like, I don't know how he does it. Apparently he's a designer and he works at a record label. He just walks around LA and sees all this garbage because it's covered in garbage. And he just finds like these ways to photograph it. And the way he kind of juxtaposes things or like uh, he'll see a sign and it's like ripped off and then somebody will be poking out of it. It's like, it's brilliant, brilliant stuff. I don't know what, where that's gonna take him, but it's very impressive to me. 
Um, commercially, I don't know what I don't understand, but I think artistically, it's great. So this is my favorite camera ever. You guys have this? Anybody? I'm just alienating everyone today. <laughs> Here's my pug. Um, my fiance just started the LA Pug Meetup. By the way, it's like 600 members. If anyone has a pug, you're welcome. Here she is. She couldn't make it today. We get married in November. I'm very lucky. She's very pretty, so I always have a pretty girl to photograph, even though I don't like photographing girls. Um, but she works at Buck in LA. Um, just designers may know what that is, animators. And that's what I have for you guys. So if you have any questions, and I just put random stuff here now. Uh, I'm happy to answer them. I know I didn't get too technical or anything like that, but um, I do know lots of stuff. So yeah, I, I'll, I'll answer anything you like. Thank you. How do you deal with the, your, you've made it to a lot of different websites and got a little different uh, press and coverage and this kind of thing, and you have a lot of followers. How do you deal with maybe, maybe people criticizing or trolling or uh, trivializing the work that you do or anything like that? How do you deal with having such a large audience looking at your stuff? Okay, yeah, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh, I mean, I think I find it more humorous, actually. It doesn't, it doesn't really affect me. The, I mean, the thing, the pizza thing is the most popular, and that's the thing that got posted around the internet. And the biggest thing, which was funny, was people were just like, obviously Photoshop, mm, you know, and they would just be like, you could totally tell, but like, none of it's Photoshop. So like, I would just laugh at that point. I'm not gonna jump on there and be like, no, dude, actually it's not. I'm the pizza guy, you know, like, I just laugh. Um, the the on Instagram itself though it does get annoying because after that release then it's like people like to let me know like hey we came here for the pizza you're posting all this other stuff don't care where's where's the pizza so like there were, for months after it people were just like I'd post a photo of whatever or whatever of a cool goat and then they would just be like where's the pizza like or can't find the pizza can you help me out like it's a where's Waldo pizza um, but I mean, I'll probably continue to do pizza like now and again. The weird thing about that series is like there's so many of them and like it kind of doesn't get old. It's like always humorous and interesting just to see a pizza on something and I don't know. If I now I do it to where if I'm traveling, I'll do one in that area. Like I was just in Colorado, so I did like a snow pizza. Um, so it's like these different like Pokemon style of pizzas now. Yes, gentleman with the beard. Like resonated with your work, with, like pizza stuff and like your style. Would you still like know like that you found it and like continue like work on that? Like, uh... That's yeah, that's a really good question, and that's that's something that like it wasn't until like I feel like the pizza thing that I really started to feel strongly that like you know what like I flip flopped all this time, but like this feels right, like this feels like my thing. So to answer your question, like I don't think so. I don't think so. I still think like, and you can scroll back into early Instagram and it still like looks, it still like is all cohesive and it looks the same, but like it's like, it's like it's missing something, if that makes sense. It's missing like the idea or the joke or the, you know, irony of some sort. So yeah, I don't think so. Good question. Um, I know you touched on it a little bit, but would you ever put a, a guy in a suit looking at an iPhone on your Instagram? and? Why or why not? Like, why Instagram versus website? Definitely wouldn't put it on my Instagram. No, 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 no. I mean, I don't want to look at that. I don't want to look at a. I, I mean, I could tell if something's beautiful, you know, like, like say if we have like, oh, we curate this coffee here or whatever, and then you take a down shot, like, yeah, it's technically a great shot, and I understand this, like, it's a cool wood surface and stuff, but that's like not me, you know? Um, but that said, like brands sometimes, you know, you might have a personal relationship with them and they want to work with you. They want to see that you can do this stuff, you know? They want to see that you can take a photo of an iPhone or someone like, it's like, it's like they don't understand that like if you can do one thing, you can do another, which maybe that's not all, 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 always true, but with my history of shooting like all sorts of different projects, like 
um, even like weddings and stuff, which you learn a lot from shooting weddings, especially like for being like lifestyle and stuff. Um, getting those spontaneous, like this person gets spontaneous moments and stuff. I think there is a skill to that, so it's important to show that, but like, I don't think people on Instagram want to see like a happy person holding a phone or whatever. At least not, not with my audience, I don't think so. Because they all came for the pizza. They don't want to see an iPhone, you know? Like, yeah, Unless good question. Unless there's pizza on it. Yeah, exactly, a pepperoni. Yes, tattoo. You talked about, um, kind of on, you talked about, you have the, the lifestyle work to show you can do it, but you have this other work that you're invested in that's your own aesthetic. Is your goal to eventually get paid for doing your aesthetic, or is that kind of cheap in it? No, yeah, absolutely. That, that's the goal. It's like I'm just, it's like I'm getting by now, uh, building up my own sort of creative identity, I would say, and then I'm still shooting all this other stuff that's like paying the bills. And advertising, I mean, it pays nicely. Like if you can, you can get like three or four jobs a year, like good jobs, and you're okay. And that's great for me because I can do these jobs, which I don't really like, you know, I'm not like super vested in them. And then I have free time to kind of make my own stuff. Um, but eventually I think I'm going to move more into the kind of brainstorming idea, like deeply involved in a project, like from start to finish, from conceptual and all the way to the end. But I'm not going to be like, I don't think I'm going to be shooting it. I'm not going to be like DPing stuff anymore. There's going to be like a camera operator and, uh, and I'll just be, you know, more concerned about the production as a whole. Um, but yeah, that's, that's the idea. And there's, there's a project I'm working on now that's more my aesthetic, that's a video that I'm excited to work on. So it's happening, it's just slowly. I want to know like more of the technical stuff on your photos. Oh, sure. Um, like, your, your photos have this large look to it, the commercials. And I was wondering what kind of, what kind of camera. Did you say commercials? Your, your, your commercial work. Oh, commercial work, OK. What camera? Yeah. Um, it's really nothing, nothing fancy. That camera I had pulled up a second ago is like my favorite camera, and this is like what I use for my Instagram a lot of time. Sometimes I'll use my iPhone, but this thing is just amazing. And this, is a, this has like a 7D size sensor in it, and it has no alias filter, which like if you, I don't know, it's no alias filter is just so cool. Everything is super sharp, and it has like this depth to it, um, and it shoots raw, of course. For a lot of this stuff, it's just been like, whatever iteration of the 5D was out then, you know, which I'm really excited about this new one that was leaked or whatever. Um, but then I also have the, the Canon 1DC, which does the 4K video and photo. Like, nobody has it, but I have it. Um, but a lot of this stuff, I mean, it's mainly, it's not so much the camera as it is the lighting. Um, that, that's not with every case. You know, some things are, are just natural light or whatever is existing there, but a lot of this stuff's the lighting. I was just really into lighting for a while, um, where I was using like tin lights, crazy amount of grids, giant softbox, and then I moved into like everything's got to be huge. We have to get like a 20 by and then a 12 by and then all this other stuff. And then I got to where it's like, we just need one light over here, and then like we're good. You know, that's kind of where I'm at now. If we even need a light, let's just find a location where we don't need any light, or we just need to shape it a little bit. So. Um, but yeah, like this shot here of like LeBron is just a telephoto and I'm in his face. That's all there is to it, you know? There's nothing going on here. He just looked at me and he's a celebrity, so it's cool. <laughs> you know? There's like. Real scary. Um, but yeah. Any, did, I, did I touch on that good enough? Uh, can you explain more about that picture in the gallery? The this guy? Yeah. This is Julio Pancello. He's downtown LA. Um, this is just with my Ricoh camera. This isn't lit. It's just, I mean, after, when you shoot for so long and you're a photographer and you guys that are photographers understand, you walk into a space, you're just like, shit, this is good light, you know? <laughs> Go stand there. <laughs> Whoa, you know? Like, you just know. And this guy, this guy was actually interviewing me uh, for this art project. And he does, if you can look, he does like weird things with, there's like a little pizza in this girl's mouth and she's like naked or something. Anyways, he's really cool. And he interviewed me and then I was like, can I take your photo in your space? And he's like, yeah. So it's just like, and that's like it. So yeah, no magic there. Just the Rico, Rico magic. This guy's, uh, this guy here is crazy. <laughs> this is the brainwash guy from um, Exit Through the Gift Shop. Wow, that's all I'll say. 
<laughs> um, yeah, a lot of the stuff's you know, you're pretty simple lighting. This was actually, it's funny, this was actually, this is very much my style, but this was like in 2006. Um, and this is, this is weird, because this is just a bare bulb flash head, like right behind me. And that's it, at the right time of day. It's kind of weird. I was just learning then, and I had just got a battery pack. So I was like, whoa, I could use my studio flashes outside. Um, and then the, those are my parents. Which look weird. They look so crazy. <laughs> yes. I've been really digging through my roots as well, just working through trying to find my thing. And I look. I just put up a new website, and I'm like, it doesn't look like friggin' anything. You know, like oh. it's it's cool, but I'm really tracking with, with you talking about your video work, and it's sort of like that's yeah, gonna get there, and it's on path. Yeah. But one of the things I've been really searching through is inspiration for myself. I'm just curious. If you were to talk outside of photography work, what are some of the biggest inspirational things that you find um, just in your daily yeah. life? Yeah. For me, it's music. For me, it's Dude, no, totally, like, for sure. When like I first, When I first heard uh, Octoon Baby and saw Anton Corbin's work, like seventh grade, like that record and the sounds and the experimentation that was happening and his work like cemented <laughs> into my soul. Yeah. Yeah, I had that DVD, the like director's DVD with him and like uh, Mark Romanek or whatever and all them, like crazy. Music videos are so cool, but it's like the road to get there and like make them seems like such a tough one. And like, again, like I talked about with film, like it takes so much work to make like a film project. Whereas with photos, you can just be like, flash here, flash there, pocket wizard, ding, you know? And then it like looks really impressive. With film, it's like you have to have, there's just C-stands everywhere and like, bleh, you know, it's just this big ordeal. So. But yeah, to answer your question, I and then as I get older and my body just falls apart, I try and just I just try and like do different things to get out of my comfort zone, you know? Like like recently I was like never really into yoga, but I started like kind of like doing it more and then I try and find these like peaceful moments to where you kind of mind just sort of wanders and then um I used to try the like David Lynch transcendental meditation stuff, but I just couldn't do it. Didn't do it for me. So I'll try and do like meditative things. Like I go hiking like all the time, and I'll go with a friend a lot, but I'll go by myself too because I'm like right up the street from Griffith Park. So I'll just go and like listen to music or not, and I'll just kind of like be on my hike, and I'm just like in the zone, and I've got like my Fitbit, which is really cool, and then um, I can look at my heart rate, even though I don't understand what that means. Um, but yeah, I try to get in those zones. And what I miss most about living in Florida is I used to drive a lot. Um, but I find in LA, I try to stay in my little Echo Park downtown area to where I'll just like maybe walk or Uber or skate somewhere. But I'm never in the car. But I remember like being in the car for like a long time and just zoning out, um, which sometimes I'll have to drive to San Francisco, which is kind of like good and bad because it's like, oh, cool, I'm going to have all these great ideas from listening to this weird ambient music and just like going to another world like in your head, you know? But music, music is really good. Music and film. Watching a film, like forcing yourself to watch an art film that's like difficult to watch, but then by the time you get to the end, you're like so affected by it, you know? Like that does a lot for me too. It's just hard, it's like, you know, you have to have a lot of discipline to, to sit through some of that stuff. Because halfway through it, you're like, I'm not enjoying this, like, <laughs> I'm not. But then you get 75% of the way and you're like, but I kind of am. I kind of appreciate what this guy's doing, this girl's doing, like, um, so yeah. Is that kind of, yeah. yeah. You asked a question about, uh, early on about how, what is your creative identity? Do you have any suggestion on how one can discover that? <sighs> I mean, my suggestion is, and I was kind of all over the place with this. This is my video section, by the way, which isn't cohesive. Um, my suggestion really is to Seek out other artists, in, in my case a lot of it was like directors, um, and watch those films and then see where you identify with them. And this is, this is for me, it may be different for you, it could be a musical artist or something else. And then when you find that like group of you know, people you're like a severe fan of, because really I'm like, the photographers I showed you, I feel like I'm kind of a mix of all of them. Over time I was like mimicking them, I was ripping them off, I was like I'm going to do this because I like it, why not, you know what I mean? Like, and I'll give 
credit where credit's due sometimes, and I don't, I don't be like, oh, this was my idea or whatever. It's like, no, I like this guy's stuff, so I did something like it. I think we all do that, you know? And um, yeah, you just keep doing that, and then eventually I feel like it sort of just like forms into, okay, well, this is kind of like your thing now because it has this and that, although it's still like the guys that I like, you know? Does that make sense? Great questions, guys. Very. One more question. One more? Okay. Um, how do you deal with, um, you know, when, so I'm, I work in an entirely different business. Okay. I'm working on trying to inspire creativity in a non-creative environment. Oof. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> I, I guess I'm curious about, you know, what it's like for you when you feel like somebody's ripping your ideas deal with that? Um, I feel like I'm, it doesn't, I feel like there are two different questions there. Oh. Um, as far as someone ripping my ideas, couldn't care less. Like, I don't care. Like, I rip everyone else's ideas. Why don't they just rip my ideas? Like, it's just the way it is, you know? Like, there's, I think there's always that moment of like, mm, okay, but then you're just like, whatever. There's so many of us. Especially now that I'm in LA, I'm like, wow, there's like a billion of me everywhere. I'm like all over the place. <laughs> like, it's just like not, and then that's what I was concerned about at first when moving out here. It's like, man, like in Orlando, I'm kind of like a cool guy, you know? And then out here, you're just like lost in the sea of creative people. But like, I actually like it better and I find it more inspiring to be surrounded by all these people just like going for it all the time. And then to answer your other question, being creative in a non-creative environment, yeah, I'm kind of like dealing with that now even. Like you have these meetings, you know, we're in like a conference room and that's why creative spaces are, you know, kind of like this. They're like cool spaces is because like you can't be inspired by sitting in like a, a stuffy, like crappy space, you know? And like you can't just be like, be creative right now. It like doesn't work like that. And I'll get anxiety sometimes and like, man, I got that call. Oh, I got that call at 10 and I got nothing. I gotta, I gotta mix, I gotta come up with some notes here so that I seem like I'm creative, you know? <laughs> so I'll like go on a hike or do something and then I'll like come back and I'll be like, okay, this is a pretty good, this is pretty good. And then I'll have like little notes so that I have something to fire back. Luckily, I don't have to go into an office. Like to me, it's, it's really tough to be in an office environment and like just be creative all the time because for me, it comes and goes. Like I'll be like doing something else. I'll be cooking and I'll be like, I was like, oh, I'll be like, oh man, and you know, and then I'll go over and I'll be like, like write down a bunch of stuff. You're like, okay, cool, because in in my experience, it's not like, oh, good idea. Okay, cool. I'll I'll write it down later. No, it's gone. It like pieces out. Like you gotta like write it down, or else like it disappears. I don't know where it goes. It'll be the best idea, and if you don't like make a mental note of it or like jot it down, like it just goes and it baffles me every time because I'm li again I'm lazy. So I'll be like, that's it. I'll be like, that's it. And then later on, I'll be like, what was it? You know? Like, so, yeah. Is that it? Thanks, guys. Great words by John Paul. Loved hearing all that. Um, one of my favorite quotes from author Todd Henry, who wrote a book called Die Empty and also The Accidental Creative, and he runs a good podcast. Um, he always ends it by saying, cover bands don't change the world. Don't be a cover band. You know, and that element of just going out, finding your voice and actually doing something that is going to be you. 
I um, encourage you to go do that.